بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا خالو ولا قوت الا بالله توکلت على الحی الذی لا يموت الحمد لله الذی لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شریك في الملك ولم يكن له ولی من الذل فكبره تكبیرا Okay so well, thank you very much for coming to this session again uh, after one week of break uh, we have uh, <coughs> finished one block of studies and we are starting the second block so the first block was called uh, Foundations and uh, this one is uh, Principles and inshallah we will then go to uh, six blocks on Practices. So uh, as usual I have some questions for you and uh, I would like to see uh, whether you have time to look at those questions and after that uh, I will share my slides with you. So, so the questions were as follows. What does God want from me? What is the purpose of religion? And what is the purpose of life? And I gave you a few verses to look at. I thought maybe those verses can give us some answers. So, before I start my presentation, I would like to hear from you. Uh, did you manage to look at these questions? And if yes, uh, what answer do you have? So, please let me know. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Uh, this is Rabia. Um, I looked at the questions and the one that is, uh, what is the purpose of life? Um, I looked at the verses and I got um, the purpose of life, um, as stated in the Quran, is um, to do your best in this world so that you can have the best in the hereafter by doing good deeds. Thank you, very good. Uh, <clears throat> did you manage to look at other the other two questions as well. What is uh, what is the purpose of religion? Um, I did, but I get a very good answer. That's fine. No problem. Thank you, Rabia. That Thank was a good you. answer. Uh, so, in terms of uh, what would be the purpose of religion, uh, can anyone uh, give us any answer for that based on the verses that we have? I think the purpose of the A bit louder, please. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. I think the purpose of religion is to, like, we already worship God, but it's to bring people together to, um, to kind of, so we can share uh, our beliefs and specifics and we can sort of like to bring us together in worshiping God okay so to to unite us in worshiping God uh, I will elaborate on that uh, a bit later thank you Valley and uh, so let's go for the last question or in fact the question that was the first one uh, what does God want from us then anyone has any answer for that what does God want from us in particular, if you manage to look at those verses, but even if not, let let us know what you what you think. What does God want from us? Assalamu alaikum. This is Amara. Yeah. Um. So I was looking at the verse from chapter one hundred three, uh, verse two. It said that man is in a state of loss, and so I think what God wants from us is to find to find like a way to get out of this loss um, state by worshipping him and so we can be guided. Okay, so worshipping him so that we can be guided. Thank you. So we managed to get some answers for the three questions that I had. Um, unless someone has anything to add, uh, I, I, I will uh, share my understanding with you. Anyone has anything to add to this? 
Okay, so <clears throat> let me share my slides with you. Okay, um, uh, Brother Shukat, could you uh, confirm that you can see my desktop? Yes, I can. Okay, so first of all, uh, this is just a <clears throat> reminder of what we, what we did uh, and what we are going to do in the next uh, three or four sessions. So what we did was that we uh, looked at the foundations and we looked at questions like concept of God, why should we worship God and be his servants, how do we know that Islam is a true religion, and then we had a review and follow-up session. Uh, then we had holiday, one week, uh, or one session. And then, this is the block that we are having just now. So it is about what I call principles. Today we are going to talk about what does God want from me, which means each one of us. Who goes to hell? Who goes to heaven? That will be a question for next time. And what is the Quran? That would be the third session in the principles block. And that will then follow by review and follow up. After that, we will have, I think, six sessions on practices. And you will see that for those six sessions, the format of the class will be slightly different. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm thinking of ways to uh, get more use of you people who attend the class, by perhaps getting a little bit more input from you when it comes to those six sessions. But we will talk about that later. So for now, what does God want from me? One of the things that uh, I would like you as uh, students of Islam to, to learn and know is that when it comes to any religious question, uh, the first point to look at would be the Quran. So you first look at the Qur'an, we try to see if the answer is in the Qur'an. If the answer is not in the Qur'an, then you will try to look at other sources. Now in particular for these sessions, because I gave you a few verses, so what I would like you to do is to try to get to those answers by looking at those verses. Because these verses, in my understanding, are the ones that are actually explaining the answer and are giving the answer to you. And that's what some of you did, like, like, like Rabia looking at the verse. So, what does God f want from me? It says there, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَاهَ For sure, one who purifies his soul reaches success in the hereafter. So, this is the emphasis that the Quran is putting on us, that what God wants from us to do is to purify ourselves. And I will explain later what do we mean by purification, although we have talked about it before, but because this session in particular is asking about that, I will explain what does God mean, what, what, what actually purification mean in the Quran. So in one word, if anybody asks you, the followers of any other religions, or even Muslims, if they ask you, what is it that in your religion God wants from you, your answer will be very simple. You can give your answer in one word, purification. God wants us to purify ourselves. And I guarantee you, uh, no one, no one would, would dislike that answer. Because purification, purifying yourself, is always involves becoming a better person, having better akhlaq, better morals, etc., etc. Everybody confirms that. Nobody says, oh, what a bad objective that you have. Everybody likes that. So what does God want from me? God wants from me to purify my soul. But it is easy to just say it in one word what that actually means. Okay? So before again I move on to the next slide, I would like to ask you, can any one of you explain for us what purification means? If you can, please. 
what does purifying our soul mean? Do you have any answers for that? Brother Shokai, can I ask you to please be kind enough and uh, help us to understand that? In, in your understanding, Brother Shokai, uh, what does purification mean? What does purifying our soul mean? Can you shed some light on that, please? It's, it's a difficult question. Uh, That's why I'm asking that from you. You're, you're assuming I know. <laughs> uh, Purifying your soul means that you be a good person without any conflicts within, without any contradictions within. You are at peace with yourself. That can only come through being a person from, from whom only good comes to everyone around you. Very good. I think I think that was a very beautiful way of putting it. Thank you very much, Brother Shokai. Uh, you become a, a person so good that only good would come out from you for to anyone around you. That that I think is, is was a very nice way of putting it. The way that I try to explain this uh, is 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 as follows. So okay, so this means that in one word, the criterion for success in the hereafter. To be in the path of purification, okay, and then what does actually that means? So, before I explain what that means, I want to tell you that this answer is also answer to the second question: What is the purpose of religion? If you look at the verse that I gave you, that verse explains that. Uh, the meaning of verse is as follows. Just as we have sent among you a messenger from yourselves, reciting to you our verses to purify you by teaching you the book and wisdom, and in this way teaching you that which you did not know. So you see, the purpose of religion as well is to purify yourselves. Now, all that uh, things that Vali said, None of them are wrong. Yes, getting together, sharing our views together, together worshiping God, all of that comes for the purpose of purification. Otherwise, there is no point doing it. So the way I want you to look at any religious belief and really any religious obligation that you have is to understand and appreciate that, look, the reason for this is just for me to purify myself. God does not need for me to pray for him. God does not need my prayer. God does not need my fasting. God does not need me to not tell lies. He does know the truth anyway. God does not need from me to be a good person, right? All of these that are regulations of religion, all of them are just for me to purify myself. All of them are for my sake. I, I would ask you to, from this very young age, adjust your view of religion like this, that, yes, it is God. Yes, if I don't do it, he may punish me. Yes, he has instructed me to do it, etc., etc. But at the end, it is all for my own benefit. Just like, for instance, when your parents or when your, your teachers tell you to do something, okay, and you may say, think that, okay, I need to do it, otherwise my parents he will be angry with me, or my teacher may give me a low mark. But if you think about it more deeply, deeper than that, then you realize that actually the reason your parent wants you to do that, the reason your teacher wants you to do that, is for your own benefit. Same goes for religion, and the benefit here is purification. So again, if somebody asks you, what is the purpose? What, what does God want from me? You will say, God wants from me to purify myself. If somebody asks you, what is the purpose of religion? Again, you will say, the purpose of religion is purification. Religion helps me to purify myself.
So the only and the only purpose of religion, the whole and the only purpose of religion is to purify ourselves to be successful in the hereafter. Of course, this also brings peace and happiness to our worldly life. So the reason I put that line there is that we should not think that because religion is for success in the hereafter, therefore it has nothing to do with our life in this world. No. When you purify yourself, as Brother Shokag also referred to, you will bring some sort of peace and happiness in yourself as well. In a situation where everybody else is not calm, everybody else is anxious, everybody else is worrying, you are the person who is calm. You are the person who is in peace. You are that person who actually calms others. You are the one who advises others to be patient. You are the one who helps others to go through their difficulties. That is all result of a person who has become so much strong by purifying his soul. Then comes that question to ask from Brother Shokai, what is actually purification? What does purification mean? What being in the path of purification actually means? What is the meaning of that? So I have tried to clarify that for you by separating our relationships by separating our relationships into three dimensions or three categories. So please look at this triangle. The way that I see it is that purification is all about adjusting and improving our relationship with other things. These other things come into three categories. One is God. So one dimension of purification is that I become a better person in relationship with my God. The other one would be with others, humans, animals, environments. So another dimension of purification is that I become uh, a better person in my relationship with others, with my friends, with my neighbors, with other people, animals, environment, etc. And the third dimension would be that uh, I, I, I fix and I improve my relationship with myself, which means managing my own personal life. So, again, there are three dimensions in our relationship. Relationship with God, relationship with others, relationship with yourself. Purification means to become better in these three relationships. Now, we can of course go in detail and for each one of them talk in, in, in length about what things can become better. Of course, I'm not going to do that. But what I'm going to do is that for each one of those dimensions, I will just give some good examples. So again, purification means to continue to become better in all these three relationships, yeah? And then to give examples. So for instance, with God, worshiping Him, obeying His instructions, reading your prayers on time, not missing your prayers, when you know something is haram, something is forbidden, not to get near it, etc., etc. That is about improving our relationship with God. With yourself, have discipline, have principles, do not waste your time, do not waste anything, okay? Do not waste your youth. Your youth will not come back to you. And believe me, I have experienced it, it will pass very quickly, okay? So do not waste your time, do not waste your energy, do not waste your youth, uh, have, have, have discipline in your life. That doesn't mean to uh, uh, live as if you are in a military camp. But do have a little bit of discipline, okay? Know what you are going to do today or tomorrow. Don't make it like, okay, I just wake up and see what will happen. Uh, bring some discipline there uh, in terms of time, in terms of your schedule. And have some principles. I think I talked about this last time as well. 
have some principles. When you decide some, there is something that you, you are not going to do, make it as your principle. For instance, your principle might be that um, I am not going to spend that much money on, let's say, food in a day. So that is your principle. You keep it like that. Your principle might be that uh, whenever I get back home uh, after washing up, the first thing I will do is that I will first do my homeworks. Then I do any other thing. That will be your principle. Your principle could be anything. But have principles and stick to those principles. Powerful people are people who have principles and stick to them. With others, be as helpful as possible. Be as compassionate as you can with other human beings, with animals, with the environment around you. So as you can see, this purification that we are talking about covers everything, all aspects of our life. So then, how does it work in terms of creation that God has made for us, the design of life? How does it work? Now, I want to give you examples here. See, let us agree that when we say purification, that actually means to have some qualifications. So you have, once you achieve a certain degree of purification, you are qualified to be called a purified person, and God will be happy with you. To achieve any qualification, we need to go through some challenges. So for instance, if you want to do bodybuilding, you need to uh, do weightlifting. If you want to get high marks, you need to prepare well for your exams. If you become, want to become a <coughs> an Olympic champion, then you need to do lots of exercises. If you want to become an artist, then you need to do lots of practices, and you need to, do, you need to be very patient as well, okay? Same is the situation for purification. Similar to those examples, God has designed the world for us in a way that it gives us ongoing and never-ending challenges. And this is to give us opportunity to keep purifying ourselves. So that is another verse that I ask you to look at. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاتِ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا he is the one who created death and life, basically meaning this word, to put you through challenge. Now, some people prefer to use the word test here. For many reasons, I prefer the word challenge. Or if you feel more comfortable with the word test, you can also use that. So he created death and life to put you through challenge, so it shows which of you is best indeed and he is the exalted in, in might and the forgiving. So, answer to the question that what is the purpose of life is as follows. The purpose of life is that we have challenges, so that by going through these challenges, we become a better and better person. This is the purpose of life. What is the purpose of life? To enable us to become better by going through life challenges. This is the purpose of life. There is a misunderstanding. Whenever we say challenges or tests, God will put us through challenges, God will put us through tests. Uh, what we think is that, okay, so this means if, you, if there is any natu natural, natural disaster, for instance, like flood or earthquake, Okay, so this is the challenge, this is the test. Or if you lose something, or uh, if, if, if it is death in the family, or if it is illness, serious illness, then this is the uh, challenge. This is that test uh, through which I need to come out successfully. Well, these are the, the challenges, no question about them, but the misunderstanding is that everything in our life is challenge. Everything, every little thing is a challenge. These things that I just mentioned, these are just among the challenges. Otherwise, every other thing is a challenge. So I try to give you some examples. For instance, 
when we face difficulties in anything? Do we have patience or do we give up? That's a challenge. So when I face a difficulty in learning something, in achieving something, becoming champion in that exercise, in that sport, etc., etc., uh, if I remain patient and if I work through it, beside becoming successful in doing that thing, I have also tried something that will purify my soul. So in that way, I have used that opportunity to purify my soul. If I do not become patient, if I give it up, okay, it's not a sin. God is not going to be angry with me, but I have not used the opportunity that God has provided me to purify my soul by, by going through that challenge and becoming a bit more patient. But for instance, the other way around, and this is what I mean, that it doesn't need to be something difficult. Easiness. Will I get the most out of it? Will I, will I help others? So let's say you become a very well. So that's easiness. That itself is a challenge. Will you waste that money or will you put it in good purpose? Will you help others or will you just forget about others? You hear about some difficulties that your neighbor has or your friend has. You don't have any difficulties, you're okay. Will you just remain happy about the fact that you don't have those difficulties? Or will you bother to, to use that easiness that God has given to you and to help that person? That is again a challenge. If we do not take advantage of that challenge, we have not take advantage of the opportunity that God has given us to improve our, uh, our purification. But for instance, when you are successful, will I become arrogant and show off? Or will I always remember the days that, like many other people, I was just trying to become successful? Huh? So all, all of you are students. All of you are trying to do something to be able to achieve your goals. Let's say, inshallah, in 10 years' time, 5 years' time, uh, you become successful. So you will become that um, successful gentleman in business who is very powerful in business transactions. Or you will become that successful lady who is in medical science and has done lots of uh, discoveries in medical science and has become very famous. And then somebody knocks on your door, a student, an ordinary person, needs your help. Will you just show off and think that, oh, I'm in much higher level to spend time for this person and, no, no, I don't have time for you? Or will you remember the days that, just like that person, you were also trying to achieve something and therefore start helping him? So that, again, would be a challenge, that if you go through it successfully, you, it will help with your purification. Or failure. When you fail in something, we cannot always be successful. When you fail in something, will you become disappointed? Or will you learn from your mistakes, uh, stand up again, and give it another try, or try something different. Again, if you become just disappointed, and it makes you to feel down, and you never uh, basically stand up again to do something else, or to try that again, okay, it's not a sin, but you have not used that opportunity to purify yourself. But if you learn from your mistake, what was the reason for my failure, that was the reason, I will try to avoid it this time, or if I cannot avoid it, okay, I will try other ways for myself, then you have achieved something, and including in that would be purifying your soul. Or, if you are in a situation where you are superior to others, let's say you are the senior student, the senior student in your school, or in the, in the university, because of your marks and everything, you have gained a respect that others do not have it. Or you have given a responsibility and authority that others do not have it. Will I remain nice to people? Or because I am in that superior condition, I will use that to basically show arrogance to people and to, in a way, make people uh, become fearful from me. 
Again, that is a challenge. Or for instance, as a child, no matter what my mother or my father tells me, uh, I may disagree with them, I may find what they tell me is not correct, but will I remain respectful to them? Will I remain respectful to my parents, no matter what? That is a challenge again. Or for instance, when there, are, there, there is an unfair opportunity to gain something, but it is not fair, it is unfair. Will I take the advantage? Or will I say, no, that's not what I was going to do? Hmm? So by mistake, an opportunity has come to you. This opportunity really belongs to somebody else. It has come to yourself. You can correct it. You can go to that somebody else and say, sorry, this needed to come to you. It has come to me by mistake. You should take this opportunity. But if you don't do that, nobody will know about it. This is a challenge again. Will you take advantage of that? Or will you say, no, I take that opportunity and take it to the, to the place that it belongs to. So if you, if you do that, then again, you have managed to use that challenge to purify your soul. Or for instance, where the truth is not to, my, to your benefit, will you, will, you, will you lie about it? Or will you stay with the truth and say the truth no matter what? If you lie about it, obviously you have done a mistake. But at the same time, you have not used that opportunity um, to, to puri purify yourself. If you, however, knowing that by telling the truth, you will, you will uh, lose some benefits, you will see some uh, disadvantage, but only because you want to stay with the truth, you will say the truth and you will not lie, then you have improved your spirituality. And in long term, it will help you a lot. Although temporary, you may face some difficulties because of saying the truth. Or for instance, with friends, will I remain honest with them or not? In a situation where I think that if I'm not honest, uh, they, may not, uh, they may not be with me again, etc., etc. Will I remain honest or will I just play uh, in a way that I think will benefit me? That again is a challenge. So, I can go on and on and on. I, I showed you, I think, maybe around 10 different cases where, where we will be challenged in our ordinary life. So in this way, we are always in a cha challenge from when we wake up till we sleep, including just now. Just now, all of us, Brother Shukaib, yourself and myself, all of us just now are under challenge. There is something that in doing it, we can become better, we can do it better, okay? Uh, will we be able to do it or not? That itself is a challenge. So this is also an answer to a popular question. Uh, you see, whenever flood comes or uh, there is a tsunami or there is an earthquake, then many people start asking question, if there is God, then why does he allow so much disasters in the world? And this question is based on an assumption. And the assumption is that God has made this world so that we stay here and feel comfortable. Well, that is not the, re the reason that God has made this world. God did not put, uh, put us in this world to, to, to protect us. He put us here to give us challenges. So disasters are also part of that challenge. So w when there is disaster, that is in fact very much in line with the design of God for this world as well. Because we are supposed to go through challenges. And normally these challenges are minor challenges, like the ones that I just talked about. But occasionally, in the life of almost any one of us, Sometimes major challenges will also happen. Sometimes these challenges are coming with a face that, are, uh, that we dislike. For instance, losing somebody in the family. For instance, losing huge amount of money. For instance, losing your, uh, losing your job. Sometimes these challenges co are coming with the face that we actually like. Like, for instance, 
being able to uh, to get a huge amount of money, being able to get a very good position at work, being able to uh, be given a very big responsibility and authority. No matter if the challenge is being looked as a as a, as a something that we like it or not, it is always challenge because we can always choose how to treat it, how to go through it. So then comes that last chapter that uh, I think uh, one of the sisters, Alina, perhaps talked about. Another way of looking at this is the way that this surah, surah al has has summarized the whole thing for us. Al-Asr, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ Why time? Indeed, man is in loss, except those who have faith and do righteous deeds and advise one other to the truth and advise one, other to one another to patience. I want to very briefly uh, break down this chapter just to understand the, the depth of it a little bit. So see, the summary of the Surat As. Surat al As, or the summary of the chapter of Al As, is as follows. True faith results in righteous deeds. If you find that somebody is doing bad things, but he appears as a very religious person, that means that his faith is not true. His faith is not complete. His, his faith is not in the minimum that it should be, because if it is in the minimum, it should result in him doing good things. It should naturally result in that. So true faith results in righteous deeds. Righteous deeds should include always remaining with what you understand to be the truth and always advising others to do the same. So one of the righteous deeds is that you always remain with the truth no matter what, in everything. And you always advise others as well to remain with the truth. See, one of the messages that Surah al As gives us is that it is not enough that we just make sure that we are a good person. If we see something around us is not good, we should also try to correct that. Because imagine, if you are in a group of, let's say, 10 people, you are always together, day and night. You go to work together. You 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 have you 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 go out for holiday together. You're always together. In these ten people, you are the one who is a good person, and the nine of them are bad people. This is not a very healthy situation, because as the minimum, these nine bad people will stop you from becoming a better person. In a matter of fact, normally what happens is that these nine people actually makes you to stop being a good person and to become a bad person. So one of the messages of Surah As is that it is not enough that you are just a good person. Of course, that is priority, so you need to make sure you are a good person. Once you are reasonably a good person, you should also try to look around you and, and see if there is anything wrong around you. You try to correct that as well by advising others to the truth and see how, how this correcting comes here. It doesn't talk about fighting. It doesn't talk about arguing. It doesn't talk about uh, uh, entering into some sort of trouble or physical uh, contact with anybody. It is just about advice. Advise others to the truth. Don't do this. It's better if you do it that way. Advise each other to the truth. And then, staying with the truth and advising others to the truth requires patience and requires advising others to patience as well. Because staying with the truth is not something that always immediately benefits you. Hmm? Sometimes by telling lie, you may benefit from something. Sometimes by backing up the wrong side of the, um, of the conflict, you may benefit yourself. 
and something by hiding what is the truth, you may benefit yourself. Sometimes staying with the truth, whatever it is, is not to your advantage temporarily from a worldly point of view, but it is always to your advantage spiritually and even from the worldly point of view, in long term, it will be to your advantage. So remember, staying with the truth is not just about telling the truth, telling the truth. That is part of it. Staying with the truth always also means to do what you believe is the correct thing to do. To have that belief that you think is correct, to do what you think is correct. So if you want to do that, then you need to have patience. And in the same way that you advise others to the truth, you also need to advise them to have patience. So if we think about it this way, then without the above mechanism, we are among the losers. In al insan al human being is in loss, unless this mechanism is in our life. So in this way, I have added a few words to this translation of the Surah Al-Asr, so that the meaning of it, the depth of meaning becomes a bit clearer. So this time, I have written it this way. By time, indeed, man is in loss. And of course, man here means human being. Man or woman, doesn't matter. Except those who have faith so strong that makes them to do righteous deeds so perfectly that leads them to advise one other, one another to the truth and inevitably advise one another to patience. I'm going to send these notes to you as usual. Uh, so then to summarize, what God wants from me to become a better person in every way, that is purifying myself, what is the purpose of life, to go through challenges, to enable me becoming a better person, what is the purpose of Islam, to guide us how to become a better person. And for next time, the question that I'm going to ask you is this, who goes to hell, who goes to heaven? What is the reality of hell and heaven? What is the criteria for going to heaven? What is the criteria for, for going to hell? And uh, also references to some labels that you use, like uh, Muslim, non-Muslim, Kafir, Jew, Christian, Etis. What is going to be the destiny of each of these groups, as far as we can say, uh, in the hereafter? Uh, what I realize is that every session when I ask questions, only two or three people answer. So I'm going to actually call other names for next week. So please make sure that you, every one of you, will look at these uh, questions and ask questions and try to answer them. That would be my presentation for today. Okay. So I talked a lot. Uh, if there is any uh, question or comments, please let us hear it. Any questions? Uh, hello? Yes? Uh, as alaikum. alaykum. Uh, my question was, uh, during a time of hardship, it's very easy to uh, lose sight of, you know, your faith. So what, what, you know, what suggestions would you have to, you know, keep keep in mind that that's the purpose of life. That's that's something that happens, and that's something you bounce back from. Yeah. See, uh, this issue that during the time of hardship. Uh, we may find a situation where we feel that we are losing our faith. Uh, part of this comes from this assumption that I was supposed to enjoy my life and every bit of it and always see happiness and easiness in this world, not why this is happening. I'm not saying that this is what the person uh, thinks, but this is some sort of assumption that seems to be in the heart of many of us. So just like, for instance, uh, if your, your friend takes you somewhere and says, look, come to, with me to this holiday resort 
and here everything is perfect and then something happens there that is not good you will be annoyed um, about your friend and you will not be happy with him right because he says come here I'm giving you this very comfortable uh, um, accommodation here and it's not there anymore but this is not what God has promised us you know we, we need to be fair to God God has never there's not even one verse in the Quran that says that God has put you on the face of earth to keep you happy and to make sure that nothing bothers you if God has made that promise then by all means when you go through time of difficulty you have every right to lose your faith in God because he has made a promise he hasn't met his promise God has never done that God has made another promise God has said for sure you will see difficulties in this life this is verse of the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah the second chapter of the Quran but an ablawannakum bishay you will go through challenges so when you see these difficulties in fact our faith should become even stronger because oh yeah okay this is that promise that God gave me right okay I'm seeing it that's fine it's coming and then because he has given us that promise he himself also has given us a second promise and the second promise is that when something like this happens come to me ask me to help you and I will help you now this help can come in two ways either that difficulty will go away or he will help us in going through that difficulty so to be more practical brother when issues like this happens whenever something like this happens I suggest okay after the first shock that happens to all of us okay we cannot remain man of God and ladies of God uh, every second of our life of course when something shocking happens in my life for the first few seconds or maybe hours or maybe even a few first days I will be in the state of shock yeah but that will go and I will come back to my to my uh, sanity right when that happens I should allow myself to start thinking that okay this is now another challenge that God is giving me so I'm actually thankful to God for giving me this challenge because this is supposed to help me to purify myself the issue is not really whether I can remove this difficulty or not the issue is whether I can go through it uh, as, as, as a servant of God and then I will ask God to help me with that God you gave me this challenge you help me with that and I think if we try to do that and it all comes with practice so I cannot give you prescription it all comes with practice when we do that gradually we will gain that confidence so my suggestion is that bear this in mind even write a note about it wait for the next challenge that comes in your life all I pray that the next challenge that comes to your life will be a challenge which involves too much happiness but whatever that challenge is going to be happiness or sadness easiness or difficulty take a note that the next challenge that comes I want to look at it from this point of view that this is an opportunity that God has given me so that I can become better and if anyone is affected by this I also help them as well if, if you have any follow-up question let me know otherwise if anyone else has any questions let us hear it uh, I don't have any follow-up thank you okay Omar no problem any more questions see one of one of the things that we need to understand about these uh, matters that has to do with our spirituality and religion etc is that uh, it is very much like physical exercise see if you want to become a strong person physically if you want to become fit it does not come with one hour exercise you need to start a systematic um, discipline of exercising 
and inshallah maybe after one year or maybe after two years you will become that strong person you know, physically or that person who is very fit in exercising so it, it comes gradually it does not come in one go sometimes when it comes to spiritual things uh, we, we expect something to happen in one day it doesn't happen like that so we know things just as we know that by, by, by physical exercise we can become strong we also know that for instance by patience we can become a better person or by relying on God we can have more patience but that itself needs exercise it does not happen in one day but what is important is that when situation comes we make sure that you are conscious you are aware that this is that situation this is that situation where I can I can work on this thing it doesn't matter if I work on it and I fail that is exercise just like the bodybuilder just like the one who does physical exercise the first 10 push-ups that he does he may aim for 20 push-ups he does 10 and he cannot do more than that that's fine but keep doing it keep regularly and one day you will be able to do 20 or maybe 50 or maybe 100 push-ups that that thing about spiritual purification is like this uh, qualifications like patience like uh, enjoying your prayers having good relationship with God uh, feeling God's presence finding in your whole, whole heart to help others etc 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 all these qualifications come with gradual practice and spiritual exercise all that matters is we just remain conscious that yes this is opportunity for me to do this to do that to become a better person Any more questions? Okay, as you know, I always ask somebody to summarize uh, all that we talked about. So, can I ask somebody to uh, summarize? The session today, basically what we talked about, it doesn't matter if you miss anything, I just want to hear it in your own wording. So, one person, please, could you uh, talk and summarize what we talked about today? If not, then I need to pick somebody. So, please, somebody. Okay, may I ask, uh, may I ask Arsalan, um, Arsalan, Arsalan Khan, and by the way, Arsalan is a very nice Persian name. Uh, can you summarize uh, what we talked about, Arsalan, if you can, please? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. Okay, so we summarize what God wants from us, and what the purpose of life is and what the purpose of Islam is and to go into more detail um, what God wants from us is to he's giving us a test basically and wants to see how we can handle all the different challenges he gives to us and how we deal with them and if we'll step back from our faith or if we'll persevere and the purpose of Islam is to just uh, strengthen this bond so that you um, you keep persevering and you keep having faith in Allah. So the purpose of life basically is just so that you you can you can build stronger connections so that you'll do better in the hereafter. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Whenever I ask anyone to to summarize things or to answer to any question, you always answer it very very uh, nicely and perfect. So. Uh, please do not feel uh, difficulty to, to talk when, when I ask you. Very nicely summarized. Let me just make uh, two very quick points 
and we will end this session. So point number one, I don't want you to, uh, I mean, okay, let me start with point number two in my mind. So point number two, and then I will talk about point number one. So point number two, uh, remember that if you read that verse that is about purification in a very technical way, it does not actually mean that we need to fully purify our hearts in order to reach uh, God's uh, satisfaction and, and be in a good place in the hereafter. Because if that was the condition, then very few people would be able to do that. The verse is, said, is saying those who are in the path of purification. So as long as we are on the path of purification, okay, and that means that just starting to reasonably purify ourselves, then we are good. That doesn't mean that we need to be 100% purified because nobody can do that. That is, quite, that is point number one. Point number two, I don't want you to think that, okay, so when we look at life in this way then, then basically that means that there is no enjoying things in life. There is no happiness. There is no real happiness. We are always being challenged, so we always need to be worried about it. So it's not a very enjoyable life after all. That is not true at all. If you, if you look at the people who actually themselves are on the path of Tezkiah, on the path of purification, their soul, actually you find that they are very happy people. And they're actually enjoying every bit of their life, every moment of their life. This is because once we realize what is the real purpose of life, then one of the side effects of that is that we will value every second of this life. And we remain very happy because we see there are lots of opportunities. We see the opportunities and I'm not just talking about worldly opportunities, I'm talking about spiritual opportunities. We see there is tremendous spiritual opportunity in front of us to become a better person, and we will value every second of our life. And as soon as we start taking these opportunities, actually the door of happiness and enjoying life will become wide, wide open to us. And I hope and I pray that every one of us will experience that. Any more questions? Well, I, I say any more questions as if all of you ask me questions. Only one person asks questions. So any other question? Okay, so I think this is us. Uh, please uh, do check the class website to see what is the task for next time. And I presume... Uh, Almorad US will also send you a reminder about it. Uh, thank you very much. The notes will be sent to you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.